Okay. So this one here is a little bit tricky, actually. Uh, but we can start off by getting dy dx. So it's the bottom squared. The bottom times are at the top minus the top times derivative of the bottom. So that means dx dy, which is the slope that we're looking for, is 1 plus x squared squared over minus 8x. But I should sub in here 1. Because that's the y value. Um, but the x is what it needs here, actually. So I'd actually put in 2. So that's minus 25 over 16. So y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 minus 25 16x plus 33 over 8. Okay, now 275 dy dx is a half x minus 4 power minus a half. So dx dy would be 2 x minus 4 power a half, or a root, uh, and this is when it's 8, but this doesn't work when I put in 2. Um, a bit perplexed. Um, 275. 275. Oh, yeah, part A is to find the slope. So I should highlight that. So the slope, that's it there. And then the line. And then well, 275 got a 4. Four. Now I, I think you can get a four if you put x is eight. But so does that mean that I'm thinking about the role of x and y the wrong way here? Yes I am. Yes I am. This is really tricky. This is really tricky. So actually it is a 2 here. No, it's a 1 here. Yeah, but why is it a 1? Hmm, and not a 2. I'll have to I'll have to think about that. Okay, so if you have a graph, this is f of x. So this point here, for example, would be x um, f of x, and then if we have our inverse graph here, this is f inverse x. And this would be the graph x, f inverse of x. So, this is the value here. That should go in here. But you see, this is normally y, and this would be like y. Uh, and 
this has this ah uh, this is really melting my brain why is it the eight that goes in and not the two so here this should have been one so i'll correct this one let's see one plus one squared is two squared is four divided by eight minus eight so that's minus a half so let's correct this okay so y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 so that'll be y equals minus a half x minus two that's plus one plus uh plus one so plus two okay so let's try and think about this all right so we have our function this is fx equals root x minus 4 and then we have our other function here and that's f inverse uh, y so let's get the function here y equals root x minus 4 so that's y plus uh, y squared plus 4 so that would be y squared plus 4 so that would be f inverse x is x squared plus 4 which is what it looks like um, so if I wanted the tangent at like 2 that would be f inverse of 2 But that's when it's written in this form but the problem is when you use this trick you're using the other variable so it'd be like you were writing it um, not in this form like in this form yeah I'd have to make this yeah I can kind of see it, but I'm not 100% happy about it. So, like, if you calculate f inverse of 2, that would be 2 squared is 4, that's 8. Which is, is right here, 2, 8, yeah. So, the derivative then... Hmm... I'm just really not happy that the 8 goes in here. I really I still don't, I'm going to pause it for a minute because I really want to think about this. Oh, I manually checked if you have a function and you get its inverse function and you differentiate it and you sub in 2, you get 4, which is correct for subbing this in as 8. But it still annoys me a lot. Still annoys me a lot. That it's not two um, and I think that's something to do with the inverse graph um, the X and Y has a different role so like the inverse normally takes the Y value but because you're putting it on the conventional XY graph then this becomes like the y value and this becomes like the x value and that's really messing with my head big in a big way but let's push on because i've at least convinced myself algebraically it's the right thing to do even though emotionally it does not feel like the right thing to do um so uh this would be equal to four so we have uh that's four y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 y equals 4x minus oh yeah that's it 
And that's the answer at the back. So we're doing correct work now. 276 dy dx equals 4 x cubed plus 1 cubed 3x squared. So dx dy would equal 1 over 12x squared x cubed plus 1 cubed. But uh, we have to put in 1. So that's kind of convenient because that's 12. Uh, oh, it's a little bit messy. 12 times 8. So 96. Um, so y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So that's y equals 1 over 96x. Uh, 5 over 6 then. Okay, 277. So dx dy would be 1 over minus 3 x squared minus 1 subbing in 2. So Uh, that's minus 1 over 13. Let's check it. Um, oh, that's weird. Why does it say minus 1 over 96? But here it says minus 1 over 13. Because obviously the slope of the tangent line and the equation of the tangent line, uh, those two should match. So that's a bit weird. Let's continue, see what happens. So y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So that's y equals to minus 1 over 13x. And it's 16 over 13 plus 2. 16 over 13 plus 2. That's 42 over 13. Hmm. <laughs> Have I done something wrong? Why? Oh, why did I write 16? What, am I, what was I looking at? I was looking at this one. I'm looking at this one. Let's not get confused, Stephen. Y minus Y1. Okay, so that should have been plus 8. Okay. Minus 8 over 13. Plus two. Yeah, 18 over 13. Yeah. So, okay. So let's just recap now. 4 and 4x. 4 and 4x. Uh, but then, here, minus 1 over 96. So this is right, but this one, they are wrong, I think. Because how could these numbers be different since this is the slope and this is the equation of the line. That's strange. Okay, and then let's see, 278. So we'll get the dx dy when we put in 1. So let's see, that would be 1 over uh, 5 plus 9 minus 4. That's 1 over 10. So then it's uh, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So finally, we get y equals 1 over 10x, and then it's 8 over 10 plus 1, 
which is plus 9 over 5. So it's just 277. Let's check the errata list to see if that's listed. The good news is that is listed, but what's confusing me is it says it was corrected spring 2021, but at least in the version of the book I have, it wasn't. Uh, and yes, it's funny, I thought the same thing too, whoever wrote this, that I think they were mixing it up perhaps with the last one. Um, yeah, it should be minus one over 13. Yeah, and it, that would match up with B, and I would agree your hypothesis is sound. So yeah, that that's their mistake, it would seem. But I'm not sure why the book doesn't get corrected when um, it says it gets corrected. Maybe, maybe, yeah, something's not quite working out for them. Anyways, all right. Um, that's that exercise. So let me just, I didn't like that one, to be honest. And it's funny because I, I think I remember, I was thinking it wouldn't be that bad, but just getting the X and Y mixed up to real, ugh. Yeah. Uh, okay. Find the Y, the X of the given functions. Okay. I'll do that next time. And then some more. Not too many tech questions. All right, the end is in sight for this section. Right, thanks for watching. We'll leave it there for today and I shall see you all next time.